Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. We're talking about switches. Now we're talking about proximity switches. All right? So today we're talking about inductive proximity switch. What is an inductive proximity switch? Well, it's a switch which can detect the presence of a material. Looking like that, look at that, how it's looking. Look how it's looking, <laughs> hear how it's looking. No, of course, look how it's looking. That's how it's looking. Eh? So we have here a sensor body. We have here an active active uh, sensor area. Eh? The rest of the sensor body is just that you can screw it to somewhere. Eh? It's a metric. I'm not sure which, which diameter. However, there are different ones. Eh? So there are very thin ones, this is a medium one, I would say, and then there are very thick ones and so on. So you can adjust it however you like. So have to, you just have to make somewhere a hole, maybe even a little bit a stretched hole, so you can shift it somehow, and then you can use those two nuts to screw it. Okay, fix it, and you can also adjust the the distance, the switching distance, yeah? because here you have somewhere the proximity area and you can adjust with the help of the screws the distance. Switching distance we are going to talk about later. Okay? And here you have labeled what this is about. Yeah? So here you see we have three wires, three wires a black one, a blue one, and a brown one. And those three wires, how should they be connected? It's written here. Yeah. Battery. Okay, can you read this? No. Here, now it's better. Uh, brown is plus, bl blue is minus, and Actually, that the load should go between blue and black and and going up to, to plus, you see. Alright, so that's how we should connect it. To indicate if this is switching or not, uh, I will use here, we also see the the, the, the level, the allowed voltage level, somewhere, uh, here, it's written in Chinese. Yeah, 6 to, 6 to 36 volt DC. So, actually, so they say, They say brown is plus, put it in, they say blue is minus, put it in as well, and they say, they say this black one is the switched one, and the load should be between the black, the switched, and plus. So actually what I want to do, I want to drive this LED. Okay. So I want to drive this LED, so I put it in here from plus to here. And of course I need a suitable resistance because simply I would blow the LED. Yeah. So I am going to connect those two things. So whenever this is switching, we should see the LED lit. Here is the sensor. Hmm. Hmm. Now the cable is covering the sensor. Stretch the cable a little bit. All right. Oops. Here is the sensor. That's the thing. Now I power this up. We have eight volts close to 8 volts, and let's see if I bring something close, ah, really it is working. 
See here, Marco River. Uh, this is triggering. This one has even an indication in the back. So you can also see that's very convenient. That's very convenient to have an LED in the back because you know this is giving a signal to some automated system, usually not just the LED. Yeah? So and if you want to adjust that you see, you see there is a distance when this is switching. Now, yeah? now there's a distance when this is switching. And if you cannot see if it's switched or not. It's very hard to adjust the, the, the gap, the necessary gap. Yeah? Because, let's see, yeah? this is one material switching yeah? to a certain, certain distance. Here, screwdriver, other material, also switching. Okay, what else could we use? A little screwdriver. Ah, I need to be closer. Yeah. I need to be closer because it's less material. Okay. Or maybe, well, let's use, let's use here some pen. Aha. Uh -huh. Nothing is happening. Hmm. So, it is not detecting every material. Let's use a ruler. No. Uh, let's use this this wire. Ah! This is detected. Okay, I need to be very close, but it is detected. The reason is yeah, the reason is that it is detecting metal. Yeah? So see, this is plastic bag, not detected. Yeah? This bag is some metal. But it's too less metal. Huh? This is metal detected very good. Yeah? So an inductive proximity switch is detecting metal. Huh? Nothing else. How good or not good depends on the on what metal type this is. Yeah? The reference is always an iron plate. Alright? So we see how this looks like, how this is working. Now let's summarize those things up and see the working principle on a sheet of paper. Okay, so let's have a look how this proximity switch is working. We have seen usually it's this cylindric form. I will try to draw this here. And here we have the active area, right? So here we have the active area, yeah, here, and inside there, there are some, some parts to focus, yeah, that, that some, some material to focus some, it's a magnetic field, okay? So here, the magnetic field, magnetic field. This is not just any magnetic field. So the top, the, the part here is just to focus this magnetic field in this direction, right? To lead it to there. Yeah. Then in here we have some oscillator. Which is producing this magnetic field, but it's changing, yeah. Oscillator. Alright? Now we have a changing magnetic field with a certain frequency. Doesn't really matter. Yeah? And if we bring some, some material where it's conductive, yeah? if we bring it in here, yeah? conductive material, Then inside here we would produce some eddy currents, Wirbelströme, eddy currents, alright? 
and these eddy currents are draining power from the magnetic field. So to keep the magnetic field up, we have to put in more power here. And this is detected by, detected by some sort of electronics. So here, here, back here, we have some electronic stuff. Yeah. The comparators and so on. And this is detected. This is detecting this additional power drain. Yeah. And then we have a switching element, yeah, some sort of, of amplifier here. Yeah. And out of this amplifier, we have our signal. Book yeah, signal. This is switching. Yeah. And then we have, of course, some plus, and we have, of course, some minus power supply. And that's how this looks roughly inside or works roughly inside. I'm sure there are other principles, but basically it's this conductive material damping this magnetic, changing magnetic field. So, uh, now we see why it is dependent on the material, because different materials react different on the magnetic field. Reference material Steel blade, steel blade, two thirty-five. All right. This is the refer reference standard steel blade. This is the reference material. If we are using other materials, yeah. So other materials have a corrective factor. Correction factor. Usual. Yeah. For instance, brass. 0 to 5. Yeah. So we need to be at half of the of this. You know, this steel plate has a, a switching distance. Here is the switching distance. Yeah. Steel blades has some, some distinct switching, dis switching distance, let's say five, 4 millimeters, yeah? and brass would then be switched at 2 millimeters, at the half of this distance. Yeah? Aluminium, zero to four five, yeah? copper. 0 to 4. You see, copper is very conductive. It's a conductive material, yes, but iron is really, really uh, collecting all of the magnetic field. Yeah? Copper is not collecting all of the magnetic field, so even if eddy current could be there easily yeah, and run easily, then it is not really collecting a lot of this magnetic field. That's it. Yeah? Chrome nickel steel 0 0.9. Yeah. So you have to consider those correcti correction factors for different materials. The typical, the typical form, how it looks like, you have shown you. Yeah? There are two different or sometimes you have an application yeah, where you want, I said you can adjust. Here you put it through a hole. Here is one nut. Here's the second nut. So you clamp those with those nuts. This distance here. Yeah. This is also this is typical. Yeah. 
sometimes you need to keep a distance. Yeah? This depends on sensor. There are sensors out there where you keep you have to keep a limit distance. Yeah. There are also sensors out there where you can even put this on level. Yeah. So where you have a hole. Yeah. Somewhere like that. Yeah. Here is some material. And you can even put the sensor in at level. 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 Leveled, yeah? zero, special sensor. Here you need special sensors. Sometimes you have the case that, you know, there is something colliding or something like this. Yeah? If you have the uh, application that you need to be at level with your surrounding material, you need a sensor which is fit for that because if the surrounding material is already triggering the sensor, you are not detecting anything. You are always detecting, all right? So you need something where this is at level, yeah? Where this is allowed to be at level. Yeah, look at the data sheet. There are sensors out there which can do that, all right? There are also other other forms of sensors, not only this, this cylindrical sensors, there are, other, there are other forms with other active areas and so on. There are a bunch of different possibilities with these sensors. Alright, so that's inductive proximity switch. Next time we are going to talk about a, a capacit capacitive, capacitive Working with capacitors, yeah, uh, in the uh, proximity switch, working with capacitors, capacitive proximity switch. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.